S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y night. Oh, yes. Fun night of football on Saturday if you were a fan of the Crimson and Cream. Oklahoma delivers huge, 38-20 over previously six-ranked TCU. And when you see those rankings come out Tuesday night for the college football playoff poll, you will see OU climb up a little bit. And right now, as far as the college football playoff season is concerned, Sooners went out. They will be a part of that four-team playoff party. Before I go any further, by the way, um, I would really love to thank the love of my life, my spouse, um, for providing us tickets for the Saturday night game. She couldn't go to the game, but me, my mom, and my son were a part of the largest crowd ever to watch a sporting event in this state's history. Over 88 grand from Gaylord Memorial Stadium saw the Oklahoma Sooners score all 38 of their points in half number one. And this was a terrific night, a great night in more ways than one. Of course, some things happened outside of Oklahoma's control in the world of college football that we'll talk about later in the show. Again, it was a great night in more ways than one. But first, for what OU could control, the game against one of the best defenses in college football, the number one defense, by the way, against the run. We talked about it on the matchup show earlier in the week that TCU was tops in college football in rushing D, only giving up 69 yards rushing per game. And the Sooners for the game ended up with exactly 200 rushing yards. And we, we're going to talk about Baker Mayfield. We'll talk about Rodney Anderson, the terrific catch that uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown had in the game as well. One of the best catches you'll ever see in that stadium's history. But you know why Oklahoma scored 38 points in the first half? You know why the offense clicked? I'm going to tell you why. Okay? We're talking about Ben Powers. Okay? We're talking about Eric Wren, Drew Samia as well as Bobby Evans, the All-American, Orlando Brown, tied in Mark Andrews. The offensive line won this game for the Sooners, and we do not give those guys enough credit. But those six guys I mentioned kept TCU honest, okay? The Horn Frogs, not only good against the run, but 28 quarterback sacks entering this game. And until the game was obvious in the fourth quarter, TCU didn't even lay a finger on Baker Mayfield. He had... A colossal amount of time to throw, and he picked TCU apart. Another thing that you know Baker Mayfield did, and, and, and by the way, you know May Mayfield entered Saturday night as the obvious front runner for the Heisman Trophy. If anything, after Saturday's game, he widened the lead even more as far as the Heisman Trophy race. And I didn't think that was possible. Uh, Mayfield with another dominating performance, 299 yards passing in the first half. He ended up with over 300 for the game, even though I know he only threw for about, what, 41, 42 yards in that second half. You know, I don't care. It didn't matter because the first half of this game, the Oklahoma offense was on fire. Most of their drives ended up in touchdowns. But here's the thing. Baker Mayfield used Rodney Anderson as a receiver and at times was wide open. Anderson, you know, had, he had the best game of his college career, and he, again, just continues to impress. 290 total yards Ended up with, what, about 150 rushing, 139 receiving. Um, he was sensational. Four touchdowns, all in the first half. Rodney Anderson made TCU's defense look silly, okay? Um, but Baker on the night, maybe a little bit too um, anxious early on, you know, because he misfired on some passes. But once he calmed down, he was fine. And by the way, Mayfield ended up with about 50 yards rushing in the game. Now, the first half for the Sooners, um, we saw uh, Baker Mayfield go to work. And we saw a heck of a catch, by the way, too, by uh, Mark Calcaterra, the backup tight end in the end zone. Was able to stay in bounds, was able to haul in the catch, you know, fingertip grab type, and was able to hold on for a huge score. And again, the, the Sooners in that first half, their defense against one of the best defenses in all of college football, Dominated, just simply put, dominated. And I thought one of the biggest moments in the game happened right before halftime. Okay, with the uh, score um, being uh, 31 to 14, Sooners TCU had a fourth and short. They decided to punt uh, from midfield. Sooners did not have much time on the clock. Hey, it didn't matter. It did not matter at all, as the Sooner offense was able to. You know, drive it the length of the field and then close out the uh, first half with a Rodney Anderson touchdown, making it 38 14, meaning that the momentum stayed on the Sooner side. Now, in the second half, yes, I'm going to admit, you know, TCU played better defense in the second half, but the biggest reason 
why the Sooners did not score in the second half. They changed up their play calling, okay? They were real conservative in comparison to that first half. And, yeah, we saw Baker Mayfield get some yards on the ground. Probably, you know, for you know Sooner fans' taste, ran the ball maybe a little bit too much. And, look, you don't want anything to happen to the franchise of this uh, squad. That's number six of Oklahoma. You couldn't imagine if he had gotten, you know, seriously hurt and maybe at times ran him a little bit too much. But the Sooners did not throw as frequently. Uh, they, like I said, were very conservative. And we know they were conservative because there were a couple of times in that third quarter where OU faced a fourth and one. They faced a fourth and one, one time from their own 28, one time near midfield. And I'm hearing people in front of me saying, go for it, go for it. And a lot of the crowd, you know, moaned when they saw Austin Seibert come out to punch. But I'm going to tell you something, okay? In that situation, in those two situations, there's nothing wrong with punting. And I kept telling my mom, I said, you know, they should punt. And here's why. You're up 24 points in the second half. You don't gamble the game. You don't give TCU any reason, any reason whatsoever to think that they can come back in this game. Punt, if TCU drives at the length of the field and scores, congratulations to the Horn Frogs. But don't give them a short field. Don't give them 28 yards to try to score. Don't give them half the field to score. Make TCU earn it. Back them up. Make them go 80, 85, 90 yards. That's the smart play. Again, you don't gamble the game. There's nothing wrong in that situation with punting. That's what Austin Seibert in that situation is for. And let's talk about the defense now for the Sooners. You know, it was it was uh, shaky. I'm talking about it was shaky those first couple of drives. You have to remember that the secondary, three quarters of the secondary, were freshmen. Robert Barnes at one safety, of course, complimented by the veteran Stephen Parker. In both corners, it was the trays. Brown and Norwood. Those first two drives, you know, TCU was able to move it. First drive was a touchdown, and the second drive we thought was going to be a touchdown, but the Sooners buckled down and made TCU try a field goal, and we saw the Horned Frogs shank it. So the Sooners got a break there, and then after that, I, I thought the Sooners played better. Devonke Lankin was absolutely a man amongst boys. Lampkin dominated the guy that was in front of him and was very effective as a run stopper, but also, too, uh, putting pressure on Kenny Hill. Thought he had a terrific game. Obo, you know, thought he got pressure as well. DJ Ward contributing. And you saw the Sooners defensive line, and, of course, welcome back Nimble Gallimore, who I think had three tackles in that first half. Gallimore was well welcomed. And remember, the Sooners did not have Will Johnson for that first half because of the targeting from the Oklahoma State game uh, last week. You know, Johnson, you know, he contributed once he was able to play in that third quarter. Um, I thought the corners, you know, Trey Norwood and Trey Brown, um, after the first couple of possessions, I thought played better. And, you know, there were times which they stuck with their man. Of course, the two things about being a corner, stick with your man, but they got to be able to turn around and look for the ball. And I didn't really see them do that, and at times that costed them. But you got to remember, they're freshmen, and they were put in the spotlight, and I didn't think that they played that bad of a game. I really didn't. And here's another thing, too, about the second half of the game. We mentioned the Sooners went conservative. But defensively, uh, when you make TCU you have to move the ball, when you give them bad peel position, hey, that sets it up for the defense just nicely. They did give up a touchdown in the second half, but that was it. Um, the Oklahoma defense, a far better performance. I know it's a different offense than they're facing in comparison to OSU. But the defense in the second half, Mike Stoops' squad, deserves a lot of credit. Oh, by the way, another thing, too, officiating. I heard this way too many times during the game. The following seven words got so old, I was going crazy. The previous play is under further review. This happened way too often on Saturday night, way too often. I understand that technology is there to correct officiating mistakes. Officials, I know, aren't going to get it right 100% of the time, and there are some good officials out there in college football, so... The following is not indicative of those guys, but it is indicative of the guys that ref last night's game. Way too often we had stoppages to look at plays that absolutely did not need to be reviewed. I mean, stop it, officials. Oklahoma, if anything, is an up-tempo offense. And the one way an up-tempo offense gets disturbed is by the officials constantly stopping the game and having the guys upstairs look at a call. And again, it's, it, at times, it's so unnecessary. You know, did he score a touchdown or not? Did he have control of the ball or not? Was it a first down 
or not? Was he inbounds? I mean, stuff like that. And after a while, it gets so damn old, and I'm sick of seeing it. Look, officiating because of instant replay at times gets absolutely lazy. It has made some officials think, okay, I've got the replay to back me up. Get the call right the first time. All right, you're closer to the action than the fans are. You're right there, up close, personal. And if we can see that something is a touchdown or something is a completed catch, then the referees downstairs on the field near the action should be able to make that determination. It's their job. I hate it when officials constantly have to rely on replay as their security blanket. Every now and then, hey, I understand it. That's what it's for. But I promise you this much, 25 to 30 minutes of that game last night was spent because of instant replay. Please, I know officials don't play the game, but they control the tempo of it, and it's bad for college football and definitely bad for the Oklahoma offense. So referees, get your head out of your butts. Get it right the first time. That's all I ask. And it was a great night for the Sooners in more ways than one. We mentioned on the weekly matchup show earlier in the week, my OUTCU preview, that the Sooners can't get caught up in worrying about things they can't control, a.k.a. other games throughout the country involving high-ranked schools. Well, job well done. Not only do the Sooners win impressively, but some things happened in the Sooners' favor on Saturday night. Number one, Georgia losing. Okay, They get whipped by Auburn. What this means now is that Obviously, a Georgia-Alabama SEC championship game, if that happens, will not involve 12-0 versus 12-0. In other words, there's no shot now at the Georgia-Alabama loser making it to the college football playoff. It doesn't look like that's the case at all because you don't have two undefeated teams meeting at the end of the year. Bama, by the way, surviving against Mississippi State, but Georgia getting whipped by Auburn. We also know, too, that Notre Dame will not be a part of the college football playoff party. They lose and lose huge at Miami. Hurricanes remain undefeated. So the way things look, with about three weeks to go, including the conference championship games, SEC is going to get one. ACC is going to get one with the Miami Clemson winner in the ACC championship game going. Loser, I can't see making the party. And then the Big Ten, even if Wisconsin were to win out, go a perfect 13-0, then the Sooners would still be able to go to the playoff if they can beat Kansas. You can't beat Kansas. You don't need to be in college football, let's face it. West Virginia and a potential rematch with TCU in the Big 12 title game. More on that in a second. Bottom line is, is that before Saturday night, we thought that if the Sooners went out, it wasn't just a guarantee that they'd make the college football playoff. Right now, that looks like it is the case, though. If they can win out, go 12-1, Win the Big 12 championship, I can't see them being denied it now because of Notre Dame losing and because now Georgia has a loss on the schedule. Georgia can still go if they win the SEC title, but bottom line is it doesn't look like multiple teams from one conference, the, a the SEC in other words, will be able to make it. TCU, the Horned Frogs is this simple. They'll get a rematch with Oklahoma. If they can win at Texas Tech and close out with a win over Baylor, if they do that, then it'll be OU-TCU Part 2. But if TCU should stumble, if they should lose one of those two games, then Oklahoma State, if they went out over the Kansas schools to close out the season, the Cowboys would play OU in Bedlam Part 2. Cowboys remain alive in the Big 12 chase thanks to a hard-earned win at Iowa State. The Sooners, now in first place in the Big 12. Fantastic job by those guys on both sides of the ball. They come away big, and for the first time since TCU joined the Big 12, it was the first time that the winning margin in this game has been greater than seven points. And was it ever? 18 point win for the Sooners. They get the job done in the first half. In the second half, putting on cruise control. Nothing wrong with that. 38 to 20 over TCU. And again, expect the Sooners to move up higher in the upcoming college football playoff poll come Tuesday. The goal is to make the top four. And the Sooners, as long as they keep playing like this, they're going to be able to do that. Boomer Sooner.